Hello, I'm Teva Harrison, and I have laryngitis, so being here tonight giving a talk, it's already a success. <laughs> a seed is germinated. The hole cracks under the swelling of the first small root. It pushes through the soil and gains purchase, sending a shoot up, up, up to the warmth of the sun. A baby is born. Its tiny finger uncurls as her gasping mouth takes air into lungs for the first time. A tree falls in the forest. Grubs and termites feast on the water swollen timber, creating a loamy soil that will nurse a sapling to life, part of the circle that is life, the ongoing cycle of potential. Potential. We're here to talk about success, but without potential, there can be no success. We need a seed of potential, a source of nourishment, and the sheer source, the sheer force of will that equals survival. And when I talk about potential, I don't only mean capital P potential or life's great successes, but the potential inherent in everything around us the potential of the small, intimate potential in every interaction of your day, the potential of this moment, this moment right here, and this one too. Inside each tiny, intimate moment, there is infinite potential if you choose to see it. It's up to you to seize the opportunity there. Potential and its cousin success are all around us, and you can see it, and you can seize it. To me, nature is the ultimate expression of this equation. A seed is both a universal symbol of potential and a species hope for continuation. And it doesn't take much. A seed can take root in the smallest bit of earth and realize its own germ of potential. I've been lucky enough to go to Canada's far north and see a first-hand example of this at its extreme, to see some of Canada's most difficult environments, but also some of its most compelling examples of potential realized, of success. In summer, the tundra is covered with blooms, all winter, they're covered with ice and snow, but when that ice melts, it exposes a thin layer of loamy earth, and tenacious flowers push up an amazing act of optimism. And the Arctic bees come and do their work, and the landscape grows and blossoms. Potential realized, even in this most harsh environment, and like these tiny flowers and bees, little things can show us beauty, and they can show us raw potential. Every action you take is like the soil where these seeds take root, where these flowers grow, where potential is nourished. Small things can mean a lot. Small actions can nourish. Small things like a casual act of kindness, I've come to appreciate casual acts of kindness from friends and strangers. You see, I live with terminal cancer, and because my potential has been cut short by this disease, I don't have the luxury of taking time for granted. I have to choose where to expend my energy. I've been forced to find my own humility and grace in accepting help from others because sometimes I truly can't do it for myself. This has forced me to rethink the relationship between potential and success, even to redefine success. Now success can be as small as getting out of bed, walking around the neighborhood to run my own errands, completing housework, or simply asking for help. My potential doesn't feel infinite anymore. So instead of finding the potential always in myself, I have developed an appreciation for how the kindness of other people 
adds to my potential, how an act of kindness is a success. Cancer has slowed me down. I've learned patience from hospitals, and I transfer this patience to the rest of my life. It takes patience to visit the same flowers on a walk every day, watching them burst into bloom, then dry, desiccate, and fall back to the earth. The success of these plants is not just in a show of color, but the completion of the cycle, fulfilling their potential. This familiar arc defines a successful life. We can learn a lot from nature. To achieve success, plants need to be adaptable, to manage their external environments, and to be strong. We're no different. Success means we need to stop to consider, is our external environment hospitable? Are we adaptable? And just how strong is our force of will? What is our potential? These are questions I ask myself constantly, because frankly, when facing a diagnosis like mine, force of will is important, but it really comes down to taking a hard look at what success really means and what potential really is. It means trying to find a balance between what I want to be able to do and what I am able to do. And if you're feeling sorry for me, don't. There's a beautiful side to taking things slowly. I take in the beauty of the small along the way. I notice things I would have raced past before. I find more four-leaf clovers than anybody. <laughs> I watch as flowers bloom and fade. I'm in tune with the cycle of life because I'm hyper-aware of my place in it. And when I'm in nature, amid the small successes of flowers and saplings, the improbability of the germination of a seed or the fertilization of an egg, I see how the very stuff of life is potential realized. We are surrounded by potential, and we are surrounded by success. If we just slow down enough to appreciate it, we can model our own lives after nature. We can create success by nurturing the potential in our hearts and the potential in others. The successes you seek are already seeded under your skin, in your heart, and in your mind. Give yourself the space to see it. And going slowly, and paying attention, and asking for help, and lifting up the potential of others, and seeing your own potential manifest. This is what success looks like to me. This is what it needs to be. Thank you.